Okay, while I wanted to talk to you about your new position here in Colorado with the Colorado Eagles, what excites you most about this new role? Well, you know what? I'm most excited about helping develop these young players. And, you know, I've spoken about it at length uh, since I've taken the job. But the idea is what I love to do with coaching is kind of build their foundation as human beings. Because what I want, I want the players to have success on the ice, but I also want them to have success after you know, their careers, you know, because they're not thinking like that. I know I didn't, but you still need somebody to kind of give you the, the blueprint of how life's going to go. Unfortunately, a lot of these guys are going to need to do something when they're done. And so I want to make sure that, you know, after a good pro career, they make it in the NHL, play for 10 years, that they have the foundation to, you know, deal with their relationships, to deal with boundaries, to deal with their finances, to deal with their spouse, like all the, the little things that no one teaches you. And then all of a sudden when you're done, you're thrown to the world and these, these things come up. So I want to get them ready for that. So I think in the, with the Eagles, all these players are, they're green, right? They need this blueprint and they don't have it yet. When, you, when you're dealing with the guys in the NHL, a lot of them kind of have it and they've made it and they have kids and they got families. So there's not a lot you can tweak there, but in the minors, you can tweak them all and you can have a huge impact on the rest of their life. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. And in talking about the blueprint, how much of your own experience as a player have you translated into figuring out what these players need to graduate to the next level? Well, it's it's all from that, right? My, my blueprint comes from my failures, right? Because that's where you learn the best uh, stuff. So I made so many mistakes after my career, during my career, um, to where I, but I've learned from them all. Because shame on you if you make the same one twice, right? <laughs> but But that's great because all this experience in failure I get to translate to them into a blueprint of here's what not to do and that's just as powerful what's here's what to do and you know a lot of these guys are going to take their own path so you can't say here's what you do xyz it's more like when x happens and you know you you fail at this let's make sure we're ready for this and that's kind of how I've used my experiences to create that. And what's your pulse for the identity of this Eagles group next year, especially with some of the off-season additions and adding veteran leadership like Magna and McDonald back into the fold? Who are the Eagles next year? Oh, I'm, I'm excited. We, they've, the Avalanche organization has done a great job uh, filling our coffers with good talent. And, you know, as far as development's concerned, iron sharpens iron. And you need good players on that team in order for your young players to develop properly. And they've done an unbelievable job uh, with the players that you talked about. Tynan's, uh, you know, another perfect example um, of really good players that could help our young guys develop. And, and they'll push for a job in, in the NHL because they're, they're right. They're ready. These guys are ready to, to fill in those holes in the avalanche. So I think we're going to be a, a fast, attacking, in-your-face, uh, hard-to-play-against team, you know, a, a sneakly type T. I love that. Yeah. As someone who went through the ranks of the F system, what advice do you give to young players in the organization who aspire to make the NHL one day? Well, I always tell the young guys that you have to be prepared to fit in any piece of the puzzle, right? So if you look at, call it the forward group, right? There's 12 pieces of that, of that puzzle. The ones in the top have a specific role. The ones underneath have a specific role. And then the bottom six have a specific role. But you don't know what piece of the puzzle is going to get hurt or what they need you to, you know, fill. So you have to be mentally ready to do any of these roles, right? So all the way from power play, first line, 20 minutes a game, all the way down to four minutes a game, fourth line penalty kill, right? Whatever it is, you have to be ready to fill that role. And that's, that's the, the, when guys get called up, if they're not prepared to do anything, right? If they're like, well, I'm just a, a scorer. I need to be put in that situation. Life doesn't work that way. So those are the guys you have to teach. Okay. Well, that's great. You're a goal scorer, but that might not be what they need. They might need a, a four minute penalty killer. Be ready to do that. And so that to me is the advice I always want to give these young players is you have to be ready to fill in whatever role the abs need. It's not what you want. It's what the team needs and, and they're hockey players. So they'll do anything for the team. So it's an easy thing to teach, but that's always the advice I give. And you mentioned learning from your failures, but also I wanted to know what you've learned from your success in being around champions in that 2001 Stanley Cup winning team, yourself included. What stood out to you about the guys who are winners? Well, you know, I, I always tell people this because I was so fortunate to, to play with all of those great players in the in the early 2000s. Like we were the Yankees, you know, like we like uh, between Kroenke and, and Pierre, 
Lacroix, they went out and got the best team you could you could you could put together, you know, of human beings first and then players. And so that's that was the the cool thing that I learned is that, you know, watching Joe and and Blakey and Borky and Wa and you literally named half the team. They're good people first. And then they were unbelievable hockey players as well. But it was always the person that I dealt with that I was so, you know, humbled by. Because here are these larger than life players that I've watched my whole life and they're the nicest people and they care and they're giving. And, and then what happens is as a young guy in the organization, you have to be that way because they are. Because who are you to them, right? Like, like they're up here and they do everything right and they treat everyone the right way. So if you're, if you're a young guy coming in the league and you see that, you know the rest of your career how to treat people. Because if they're doing it, you better do it because you're just anybody and they're, they're the 1%. And so it was a great lesson about humility and being grateful and perspective uh, to kind of learn from their leadership, at, not on the ice, but also off the ice. And so that, that's what I always take is there's no room in hockey for, for bad people. With the Avs in such a competitive window as it is, it probably makes opportunities for players in the American League to get a call-up a little bit more challenging to come by. How do you reconcile those things and your goals with the players? Well, I, I, kind of what I had mentioned earlier is seeing with the Avs, and you know, I'm, I'm all, we'll have open communication with the, with the big club as we always do, and they're going to have needs, right? And so the balls of clay that we have down in the minors, we can mold into whatever the team needs to win up top, yeah. right? And it also developing their individual game. But, you know, if, if Bedsy's like, hey, we need we need some penalty killers, we need some physicality, we need some fighting, we need some shot blocking. Okay, well, I got some great balls of clay that, that we can mold into that, you know, genre. And, and you get the right, you get enough guys that are hungry, willing to do whatever to fit into that puzzle piece. They'll do the job because the guys just want to make it. So if you give them the, here's the path, you know, you're going to have to eat pucks, you might have to eat it. You might have to soak a couple rights, you know, to the jaw. Uh, and you might have to, you know, play a physical style that maybe you're not used to, but that's what they need. And so that communication between the big club and our club um, will be a factor. And our communication to the players about what the abs want and what the abs need will also be a big factor. So I'm excited. I'm excited to, to help in any way we can. And this will be the last one. I wanted to revisit the excitement of being here this weekend. Next year is something of a homecoming for you to the organization, but this feels like the very first start of it. Can you tell me why this was a special weekend or extra rewarding for you to be around Avs alumni? Yeah, this this is, you know, when I, uh, Teresa, my wife, and I were, were talking about it this morning. Being in the room with, with all the boys that you played with and played against that, that wore the jersey, it's just different, you know, and, and getting the opportunity to come here, you know, Johnny Lyles is, one of my favorite humans of all time. And uh, and he's done an unbelievable job with the alumni here in Colorado. So when he asked me if I could come, it was an awesome opportunity because we love, who doesn't love Vale? And, uh, and I'll do anything for that kid. And plus I got to see all the guys I haven't seen in a while. So, you know, you walk into that room last night and and every, every ex-hockey player can tell you this, um, but how it felt was like, like you said, coming home. And I was in that room and this morning my wife was like, when you're in a room full of those guys and you, he's like, she's like, you have a different energy, you have a different laugh, you have a different feel. She's like, that's really cool. She's like, there's a different vulnerability when you're all together. And it's, it's a cool, safe place to me. And when she said that, I was like, God, that makes so much sense. And that's exactly what it is when you come home.